Hello. So in this video, we're going to talk about Steve Pink's 2006 film, Accepted. So this is your sort of typical late 90s, 2000s slacker comedy where a group of misfits basically fails their way to success. But it has a lot of interesting stuff to say about a higher education system. And I'm going to argue it's actually a pro-communist movie. So the basic premise of Accepted is that you have a group of students, our protagonist being Bartleby B. Gaines, uh, played by Justin Long. And these students haven't gotten into any colleges or universities for one reason or another. Uh, so like Bartleby has applied to a bunch of places and just hasn't gotten in. Uh, there one, his one friend uh, had a football scholarship, but then busted his knee. Football scholarship gone. Uh, another girl had been working since first grade to get into Yale, only applied to Yale, did not get in. Uh, so you've got this sort of group of misfits, um, some of them slackers, some of them de just desperate because they haven't gotten into college. And as Bartleby's father tells him, society has rules and one of those rules is you go to college. So they've got all of this pressure on them. And so to try and appease his father, who's really quite dickish about Bartleby not getting into college and who in fact, publicly shames him in front of other people about it. Uh, Bartleby decides he's going to make up a university, the South Harmon Institute of Technology, which he's going to claim he's go going to write a fake acceptance letter, get his friend to make a fake website for it. Um, and he's going to tell his father that it is the sister school of Harmon, which is the good college in their town. That, there's stuff to be said about that because it's an interesting conceit because uh, they are in like small town Ohio and Harmon seems to think that it is on par with places like Harvard, Yale, and Stanford. No, if you're a small if you're a small university in Ohio, uh, no offense to Ohio and to the schools there. Uh, if any schools in Ohio want to hire me, I'd I'd be glad to send you a CV, application letter, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But like, realistically, if you're a if you're a small liberal arts school in the Midwest, you're not on the level of Harvard, Yale, Stanford, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But that being said, so uh, they they create this fake application letter or the uh, fake acceptance letter, fake website. Then Bartleby's family's like, great, we, we're thrilled. We look forward to dropping you off. At which point they have to create a fake campus, uh, which this small group of like six misfits do by leasing an old mental hospital and fixing it up, or at least fixing up parts of it. Uh, they also get Jack, uh, or sorry, uh, Lewis Black, not Jack Black. It'd be a very different character if it was played, but if he was played by Jack Black, no, they get Lewis Black, um, who's had been an academic at Harmon, but he lost his job decades ago. He's an alcoholic, extremely cynical. He's Lewis Black. Lewis Black basically just plays himself in this. Um, if he had worked at a shoe store until he got fired from that job. So they get that guy to pretend to be the Dean, etc., etc. So they have a whole setup. Then they hit a snag in that um, students start showing up because they put on the website, acceptance is just a click away. And all the students who couldn't get in anywhere else got in there. So suddenly they've got massive amounts of money because everybody is paying their $10,000 tuition up front. 
but they've also got to provide these kids with a university experience, which they don't have any clue how to do. So they basically make it up. And this is where things get really interesting. Um, because this, I would argue, is where the film starts getting really pro-communist in a couple of different senses, but the main one is in the sense laid out by Paulo Freire, uh, who is a Brazilian uh, education theorist, and by Michael Hart and Antonio Negri, who are contemporary communist philosophers. So the way that they approach education is basically they say, what do you want to learn? We'll create classes around whatever it is that you want to learn and we, the students, will be the instructors. We will learn in a communal fashion. And so this really aligns with Freire's ideas about education because Freire was opposed to what he called the banking concept of education, which was premised on the idea that knowledge is a kind of commodity or an, an object that instructors bestow upon learners. So it's a hierarchical system where the teacher has the authority and the teacher makes deposits of knowledge into the student, who is basically a sort of receptacle, a knowledge receptacle. That's the way Freire characterizes traditional education systems. And it's not necessarily all that wrong, even though in the past 40 years or so, 50 years or so, the ways in which we've approached education have changed substantially from that very traditional rigid structure that Freire was primarily reacting against. But what Freire advocated is a communal approach to learning. Um, and one of the things that he did was he would organize groups of peasants and have them learn by discussing, have them learn by talking through issues. And that was the way that his education model functioned, was that the students taught themselves in a communal discussion-based atmosphere. And so that's essentially what Bartleby and his friends set up in South Harmon, this system in which they learn through experience, they learn through discussion, and they learn through just sort of absorbing information rather than the very traditional, formal, stodgy lectures that you get in the scenes where Bartleby goes to visit Harmon College. And, and actually in Harmon College, in, the, in those scenes, one of the things that we have is just a speaker on a stand of an, a teacher who hasn't even shown up for class who's just um, speaking to the students from a distance. So we have this very detached, and you see students like falling asleep. You see students playing Game Boy. You see students frantically writing notes and just really paranoid. And so it's not a, and then and then the chick that Bartleby is, uh, is in love with She's telling him, like, she wants to take these photography courses, but her advisor told her not to because the, for some reason the photography courses won't count toward a photography major and all this stuff. Like, it's, it's the, all of this sort of height, uh, all of this sort of stereotypical Ivory Tower University bullshit. That's not really the, the university experience for, for the most part. Like, it, it's a caricature of it. But this is all invested, Harmon is all invested in that banking model of education. And it's specifically a sort of pro-capitalist approach because we have Dean Van Horn uh, who wants to buy up a bunch of land outside the current campus of Harmon and create the Van Horn Gateway which is basically just a large green with some paved walking paths and a large arch, like sort of Arch of Constantine or Arch of Titus, Arc de Triomphe or whatever it is. 
And the way that he explains it to, um, I can't remember the character's name. Um, the stereotypical rich kid, blonde leader of the fraternity, president of the student council, whatever it is. Um, so th the way that Van Horn explains it is that it's a gateway to keep knowledge in and to keep ignorance out. So the idea is Harmon is premised on this proprietary approach to knowledge. We own the knowledge and we are going to keep it in through our symbolic gateway. Whereas South Harmon, Bartleby and all, and all the rest of them have this open and egalitarian approach to knowledge. And so this is the sense in which this is this is um, Michael Hart and Antonio Negri's approach to communism. Because Hart and Negri's famous book is Empire, but I actually think, for my money, the, the more interesting books are the second two in that trilogy, which are Multitude and Commonwealth in which they develop the idea that the multitude, which is the mass of everyone who is sort of oppressed or exploited or interpolated within the capitalist system, has the potential to be unimaginably creative. Like as a collective, we could do so many brilliant things if the structures of capitalism, which keep us isolated as individual consumers, individual workers, um, which keep us sort of divided from one another and in, in this artificially created competition over resources, if those things could be transcended, then we would have this amazing ability to be creative. We could solve global problems, etc., etc. I really recommend Multitude and Commonwealth. I think they're incredible books. Empire is good too, but for me, Multitude and Commonwealth is where it's at. I'm a big Hart and Negri fan. If you guys are watching. I wish. Um, but in this sense, in this idea that the multitude, unfettered by the structures of capitalism, can be incredibly productive and incredibly creative, this is essentially what Accepted tells us. Because South Harmon is a functioning system. It's not a formal university system. It's experimental education, pretty much by definition. But it works for these students, and they are productive. And at the end, Basically, what, what we get toward the end of the movie is an accreditation hearing um, because the whistle is blown on this fake college um, and, and the representatives of South Harmon, which ends up being everybody who attended the school, everybody comes down for this hearing, um, comes. And the thing is, it's a weird accreditation hearing because I don't typically i don't so in this accreditation hearing you've got bartleby and lewis black and and their their group but then you've got van horn who's opposing their accreditation which i don't think is typical of accreditation here i it, it, i could be wrong but it doesn't make that much sense to me that you would normally have representatives of another university or college show up and be like i oppose this school getting accreditation it doesn't make sense to me. It may be how it is. If you know, let me know in the comments. But what Bartleby and the rest of them effectively end up arguing is that even though they don't utilize a traditional university structure, in fact, they have been educating themselves. And they make the case by pointing to some of their unconventional courses that they have. Um, like courses in which they uh, build and ride skate ramps, which teaches things like physics, engineering, uh, aerodynamics. 
they point to a music course in which they study music and lyrics in addition to just rocking out. Uh, I think the course is Rock Our Faces Off 235. Um, so, like, this is the thing is they, they are actually learning things, but it's in an unconventional structure that's built out of their creativity and built out of the possibilities that arise when you don't have the restricting formal hierarchical structures that you get with Harmon College. And so in this sense, because it opposes this idea of regulation and the limits of a proprietary mindset, the film is extraordinarily pro-communist.